New Zealand English, Wikipedia article audio. New Zealand English is the variant of the English language spoken by most English-speaking New Zealanders. Its language code in ISO and Internet standards is NNZ. English is one of New Zealand's three official languages and is the first language of the majority of the population. Dictionaries Historical Development Phonology Vocabulary Australian English Influences American English Influences New Zealandisms Differences from Australian English Usage Mori Influence Dialects Spelling Bibliography The English language was established in New Zealand by colonists during the 19th century. It is one of the newest native speaker variety of the English language in existence, a variety which has developed and become distinctive only in the last 150 years. The most distinctive influences on New Zealand English have come from Australian English, English in Southern England, Irish English, Scottish English, the prestige received pronunciation, and Maori. New Zealand English is most similar to Australian English in pronunciation, with some key differences. The first comprehensive dictionary dedicated to New Zealand English was probably the Heinemann New Zealand Dictionary, published in 1979. Edited by Harry Orsman, it is a 1,337-page book, with information relating to the usage and pronunciation of terms that were widely accepted throughout the English-speaking world and those peculiar to New Zealand. It includes a one-page list of the approximate date of entry into common parlance of the many terms found in New Zealand English but not elsewhere, such as haka, bohe, and bach. A second edition was published in 1989 with the cover subtitle The First Dictionary of New Zealand English and New Zealand Pronunciation. A third edition, edited by Nelson Wadi, was published as the Reed Dictionary of New Zealand English by Reed Publishing in 2001. Orsman's next dictionary achievement was the New Zealand Dictionary, published by New House Publishers in 1994. It was co-edited by Elizabeth Orsman. A second edition was published in 1995, edited by Elizabeth Orsman. In 1997, Oxford University Press produced the Harry Orsman edited The Dictionary of New Zealand English, a dictionary of New Zealandisms on historical principles, a 981-page book which it claimed was based on over 40 years of research. This research started with Orsman's 1951 thesis and continued with his editing this dictionary. To assist with and maintain this work, the New Zealand Dictionary Centre was founded in 1997. It has published several more dictionaries of New Zealand English, including the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary, edited by New Zealand lexicographer Tony Deverson in 1998, culminating in the 1,374-page The New Zealand Oxford Dictionary in 2004, by Tony Deverson and Graham Kennedy. A second, revised edition of the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary was published in 2006, this time using standard lexicographical regional markers to identify the New Zealand content, which were absent from the first edition. Another authoritative work is the Collins English Dictionary first published in 1979 by HarperCollins which contains an abundance of well-cited New Zealand words and phrases, drawing from the 650 million word bank of English, a British research facility set up at the University of Birmingham in 1980 and funded by Collins Publishers.
Although this is a British Dictionary of International English there has always been accredited New Zealand advisor for the New Zealand content, namely Professor Ian Gordon from 1979 until 2002 and Professor Elizabeth Gordon from the University of Canterbury since 2003. New Zealand-specific dictionaries compiled from the Collins English Dictionary include the Collins New Zealand Concise English Dictionary, Collins New Zealand School Dictionary and Collins New Zealand Paperback Dictionary. Australia's Macquarie Dictionary was first published in 1981, and has since become the authority on Australian English. It has always included an abundance of New Zealand words and phrases additional to the mutually shared words and phrases of both countries. Every edition has retained a New Zealander as advisor for the New Zealand content, the first being Harry Orsman and the most recent being noted New Zealand lexicographer Laurie Bauer. A more light-hearted look at English as spoken in New Zealand, a personal Kiwi Yankee dictionary, was written by the American-born University of Otago psychology lecturer Louis Leland in 1980. This slim volume lists many of the potentially confusing and slash or misleading terms for Americans visiting or emigrating to New Zealand. A second edition was published in 1990. From the 1790s, New Zealand was visited by British, French and American whaling, sealing and trading ships. Their crews traded European goods with the indigenous Maori. The first settlers to New Zealand were mainly from Australia, many of them ex-convicts or escaped convicts. Sailors, explorers, and traders from Australia and other parts of Europe also settled. In 1788 the colony of New South Wales of Australia was founded. The colony included most of New Zealand except for the southern half of the South Island. Formed two years prior in London, the New Zealand Company announced in 1839 its plans to establish colonies in New Zealand. The continuing lawlessness of the informally established Australian and European settlers spurred the British to take better control of the colony which until then they had largely ignored, having concentrated mainly on managing Australia. From the signing of the Treaty of Wait Angie in 1840 there was considerable European settlement, primarily from England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, and to a lesser extent the United States, India, China and various parts of continental Europe. Some 400,000 settlers came from Britain, of whom 300,000 stayed permanently. Most were young people and 250,000 babies were born. New Zealand ceased to be part of New South Wales and became a British colony on July 1, 1841. Gold discoveries in Otago and Westland, caused a worldwide gold rush that more than doubled the population from 71,000 in 1,859 to 164,000 in 1,863. Between 1,864 and 1,865, under the New Zealand Settlements Act 1,863, 13 ships carrying citizens of England, Ireland, and South Africa arrived in New Zealand under the Waikato Immigration Scheme. In the 1870s and 1880s, several thousand Chinese men, mostly from Guangdong Province, migrated to New Zealand to work on the South Island goldfields. Although the first Chinese migrants had been invited by the Otago provincial government they quickly became a target of hostility from settlers and laws were enacted specifically to discourage them from coming to New Zealand thereafter. The European population of New Zealand grew explosively from fewer than 1,000 in 1,831 to 500,000 by 1,881. 
By 1911 the number of European settlers had reached a million. This colourful history of unofficial and official settlement of peoples from all over Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Asia and the intermingling of the people with the indigenous Mori brought about what would eventually evolve into a New Zealand accent and a unique regional English lexicon. A distinct New Zealand variant of the English language has been recognised since at least 1912 when Frank Arthur Swinnerton described it as a carefully modulated murmur. From the beginning of the haphazard Australian and European settlements and latter official British migrations, a new dialect began to form by adopting Maori words to describe the different flora and fauna of New Zealand, for which English did not have words of its own. The New Zealand accent appeared first in towns with mixed populations of immigrants from Australia, England, Ireland, and Scotland. These included the militia towns of the North Island and the gold mining towns of the South Island. In more homogeneous towns such as those in Otago and Southland, settled mainly by people from Scotland, the New Zealand accent took longer to appear. Since the latter 20th century New Zealand society has gradually divested itself of its fundamentally British roots and has adopted influences from all over the world, especially in the early 21st century when New Zealand experienced an increase of non-British immigration which has since brought about a more prominent multinational society. The internet, television, movies, and popular music have all brought international influences into New Zealand society and the New Zealand lexicon. Americanization of New Zealand society and language has subtly and gradually been taking place since World War II and especially since the 1970s, as has happened also in neighbouring Australia. In February 2018, Clayton Mitchell MP from New Zealand first led a campaign for English to be recognised as an official language in New Zealand. Not all New Zealanders have the same accent, as the level of cultivation of every speaker's accent differs. The phonology in this section is of an educated speaker of New Zealand English and uses a transcription system designed by Bauer ETAL specifically to faithfully represent the New Zealand accent. It transcribes some of the vowels differently, whereas the approximant slash r slash is transcribed with the symbol even in phonemic transcription. There are a number of dialectal words and phrases used in New Zealand English. These are mostly informal terms that are more common in casual speech. A considerable number of loan words have also been taken from the Mora language as well as from Australian English. New Zealand adopted decimal currency in 1967 and the metric system in 1974. Despite this, several imperial measures are still widely encountered and usually understood such as feet and inches for a person's height, pounds, and ounces for an infant's birth weight, and in colloquial terms such as referring to drinks in pints. In the food manufacturing industry in New Zealand both metric and non-metric systems of weight are used and usually understood owing to raw food products being imported from both metric and non-metric countries. However per the December 1976 Weights and Measures Amendment Act, all foodstuffs must be retailed using the metric system. In general, the knowledge of non-metric units is lessening. The word spud for potato, now common throughout the English-speaking world, originated in New Zealand English. As with Australian English, but in contrast to most other forms of the language, some speakers of New Zealand English use both the terms bath and bathe as verbs, with bath used as a transitive verb, and bathe used predominantly, but not exclusively, as an intransitive verb. Both the words amongst and among are used, as in British English. The same is true for two other pairs, 
whilst and while and amidst and amid. Many New Zealand English terms have their origins in Australia. Some Australian terms present in NZE include bushed, chunder, dinkum, drongo, fossic, jumbuck, larrikin, macas, maymei, paddock, palm or pomi, skite, station, wowser, and ute. Advancing from its British and Australian English origins, New Zealand English has developed to include many Americanisms and American vocabulary in preference over British terms as well as directly borrowed American vocabulary. Some examples of American words used instead of British words in New Zealand English are bobby pin for British hair pin, muffler for the British silencer, truck for the British lorry, station wagon for the British estate car, stove over cooker, creek over brook, hope chest over bottom drawer, eggplant instead of aubergine, hardware store instead of ironmonger, median strip for central reservation, stroller for pushchair, push up for press up, potato chip instead of potato crisp, license plate. For registration plate, cell phone, or cell for British and Australian mobile phone and mobile, an ice block instead of British ice lolly. Directly borrowed American vocabulary include the boonas, bucks, bushwhack, butt, ding, dude, duplex, faggot and fag, figure, hightail it, homeboy, hooker, lagoon, loop. Man, Major, To Be Over, Rig, Sheltered Workshop, Spat, Subdivision, and Tavern. In addition to word and phrase borrowings from Australian, British, and American English, New Zealand has its own unique words and phrases derived entirely in New Zealand. Not considering slang, some of these New Zealandisms are Many of these relate to words used to refer to common items, often based on which major brands become eponyms. Some New Zealanders will often reply to a question with a statement spoken with a rising intonation at the end. This often has the effect of making their statement sound like another question. There is enough awareness of this that it is seen in exaggerated form in comedy parody of New Zealanders such as in the classic 1970s comedy character Lin of Tawa. This rising intonation can also be heard at the end of statements, which are not in response to a question but to which the speaker wishes to add emphasis. High rising terminals are also heard in Australia. In informal speech, some New Zealanders use the third-person feminine she in place of the third-person neuter it as the subject of a sentence, especially when the subject is the first word of the sentence. The most common use of this is in the phrase she'll be right meaning either it will be okay or it is close enough to what is required. Similar to Australian English are uses such as she was great car or she's a real beauty, this. Aussie Australia. This extension of the term to mean the country is unique to New Zealand. In Australia and internationally, Aussie means Australian, as opposed to Australia the normal adjectival usage is also used in New Zealand, big huge large object, extensive, glaring, choice. One word rejoinder expressing satisfaction, to many uses the most common being a form of greeting, or a contraction of cheers most commonly heard in che, bro. It is also used as an alternative to good on you, dairy corner shop, convenience store, fang it to go fast, gib board, Gibraltar board the common NZ term for dry wall, plasterboard interior wall lining, good as gold all as well. Handle the pint glass of beer with a handle, as sold in pubs, hard out slash hard used to show agreement, or used to show emphasis slash intensity. Examples, 
agreement, ye yeah, hard slash hard out. He was running hard out, heaps abundant, plenty, plentifully. Examples, there are heaps of cops surrounding the house. I love you heaps. Give it heaps. Give it your best effort, hokey pokey the New Zealand term for honeycomb toffee, also a flavor of ice cream consisting of plain vanilla ice cream with small, solid lumps of honeycomb toffee, jandals the NZ term for flip-flops. Originally a trademarked name derived from Japanese sandals, kiwi not only does kiwi mean a New Zealand person, but it is sometimes used to replace the word New Zealand in NZ businesses or titles, such as Kiwi Rail and Kiwi Bank or New Zealand related nouns, e.g., Kiwiism. It is also used to address something that is particularly related to New Zealand, e.g., that house is pretty Kiwi, Luncheon Sausage Devon Sausage, Metal Road, a dirt road overlaid with gravel to assist drainage and keep dust down typically found in rural settings, munt a destroyed, trashed, broken, be of a person, weird or odd, polonia small cocktail sausage, about 5 cm long, dyed red and made of mixed processed meats, usually served and eaten with toothpicks. Polona has other meanings in Australia, South Africa and the UK, poop tired, exhausted, Puckerud broken, busted, wrecked. From Mori Puckerud to Shatter, Ranch Slider, Ranch Slider, the universal NZ term for a sliding door, usually of aluminium frame and containing glass panels, rark up to criticize, confront, or hurry along, rattle your dags. Hurry up. Dags are feces stuck to the wool of a sheep which rattle if dry, rough as guts of machinery, not working properly, of behavior uncouth or unacceptable, scrog in a nutritious snack taken along on hikes by trampers, skull to drink a glass or handle of beer in one go, she'll be right it will be fine, shingle gravel. A shingle road is an unsealed road, shot, thank you, to express joy, give praise, well done. Many local everyday words have been borrowed from the Mora language, including words for local flora, fauna, place names, and the natural environment. The dominant influence of Mori on New Zealand English is lexical. A 1999 estimate based on the Wellington Corpora of written and spoken New Zealand English put the proportion of words of Mori origin at approximately 0.6%, mostly place and personal names. The everyday use of Mori words, usually colloquial, occurs most prominently among youth, young adults, and Mori populations. Examples include words like kia ora, or kai which almost all New Zealanders know. Mori is ever-present and has a significant conceptual influence in the legislature, government, and community agencies, where legislation requires that proceedings and documents be translated into Mori. Political discussion and analysis of issues of sovereignty, environmental management, health, and social well-being thus rely on Mori at least in part. Mori as a spoken language is particularly important wherever community consultation occurs. Recognizable regional variations are slight, with the exception of Southland and the southern part of neighboring Otago, where the Southland burr is heard. This southern area formed a traditional repository of immigration from Scotland. Several words and phrases common in Scots or Scottish English persist in this area, examples include the use of we to mean small, and phrases such as to do the messages meaning to go shopping. Recent research suggests that post-vocalic slash r slash is not restricted to Southland, but is found also in the central North Island where there may be a Pacifica influence, 
but also a possible influence from modern New Zealand hip-hop music, which has been shown to have high levels of non-pre-vocalic slash r slash after the nurse vowel. Other Southland features that have been identified and which may also relate to early Scottish settlement are the use of the trap in a set of bath words, which is also found in some Australia English regions, and in the maintenance of the slash 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 w slash distinction. Taranaki has been said to have a minor regional accent, possibly due to the high number of immigrants from the southwest of England however this becoming less pronounced. Some Māori have an accent distinct from the general New Zealand accent, tending to use Māori words more frequently. Bro Town was a TV program that exaggerated Māori, Polynesian, and other accents. Linguists recognize two main New Zealand accents, denoted Pke English and Māori English with the latter strongly influenced by syllable-timed Māori speech patterns. Pke English is beginning to adopt similar rhythms, distinguishing it from other stress-timed English accents. Click on a colored area to see an article about English in that country or region.